Ha, ah, I was muted. That's funny. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the official first episode of The New Breed for IMC TV. And if you don't know right now, IMC TV is a worldwide broadcasting channel of all of the top ranking IMC Nation members. Now, if you haven't heard of IMC Nation, look us up. You can Welcome go on everybody. Instagram, you can go on YouTube, you can go on TikTok, you can go on wherever you want to go. Just search up the hashtag IMC Nation Broadcasting and you'll find us there. All of the top. Okay, so let's start to record this. Now, if you haven't heard of IMC Nation, of course, the computer. All right, welcome everybody. Let's get started to this first episode of the new breed, and this is going to be distributed through YouTube. This is going to be distributed through all platforms. And if this is the first time you and I interact, welcome to the new breed. Now, the reason why I named it the new breed, let's give a quick synopsis, a quick breakdown of what this channel encompasses, what we cover, what we talk about, and what my ultimate mission when I created this uh, this channel. And if you know, the first time it's I in the title, the new breed, the new the breed of being, the new breed of civilization, the new breed of human being interacting in this world. You see, just like you right now watching this, this live stream, maybe to you, I'm just a character on the screen. Maybe to you, I'm just some sort of figure on YouTube or wherever you're watching this right now. Um, the new breed Recognize that in this moment, interacting in this world, I'm also so experiencing just like life just like me, meaning I have a mother and a father. I'm just a, I have friends. On the screen. Maybe I have coworkers. I have uh, you know places I go to, places I shop at. Right, just like you, I recognize that you have a family, you have friends, you have uh, an environment, you have a world that you find yourself in. Right, I also have a world that I find myself in. I have now coworkers. I have. Uh, you know, you one thing I want you to take note of is, at, right? Just like you, I recognize. Did that you, you have a family, choose you have friends, you have, uh, the circumstances of your life, you right? Because if I take, if I ask myself that question, that right? At one point, that was the day one of Fernando's existence. One thing First off, to take note Fernando. Of that, that was a made-up name that was given to me. Fernando Caro. That label was given to me by my birth. If I take, if I ask my birth that parents, the two right? pairs that rent to me, parents, they won, right? And so, out of the womb, first I was given this name. Now that wasn't my choice. That was made. Now these two parents come from a cultural background of Mexico, right? A Mexican culture. Now this being here, first day on planet Earth, right? Doesn't get to choose what his nationality is, doesn't get to choose what his culture will be, doesn't get to choose what his values will be, doesn't get to choose where he's going to grow up, how he's going to speak. Matter of fact, I didn't even get to choose my name. Now, if you're just like me, right, doesn't get to choose, it's more than likely that you didn't get to choose your name, you didn't get to choose your culture, you didn't get to choose where you were going to grow up, you did not get to choose how you were going to be raised, the values you were going to be taught, the parents who were going to rent you for the first 18 years of your life. You didn't get to choose any of that. It's more than likely. And here you are finding yourself on planet Earth. You didn't get to choose asking this question. You did not get to choose who am I? Where did I come from? The pair. What's my mission here while I'm here? What's the purpose of my life? What's the purpose of my existence? And here you are finding is my purpose here on planet Earth just to get a job? Is my purpose here just to uh, live this ordinary experience? Is my purpose? Just to know the same people I've been around my whole life. What What's is the purpose of this being here on planet Earth? What's and I think that's the question that you and I all have. What's the purpose of my existence? I ultimately believe that you and I are here in search of finding out who we are and where we come from in January. Because I don't buy the idea that I'm this identity. Because the last time I look at it, I didn't get to choose who Fernando Caro was. I think that's the question that you and I all have. The purpose of my existence. There's I an echo. Believe that Quick pause on the tap lane. Search of finding out uh, who we are and where we come from in January. Because I pause recording. I'm not too sure what you're saying, brother. Because the last time I looked, if you couldn't mute, there's a echo. I hear you talking, and then so, where's the echo coming from? It may be my phone. I see. Um, 
Uh, I'll throw down a phone call. It may be me. Never mind, brother. Disregard. Okay. There's a... All right. Well, thank you. Anyway, if there's an echo, then we'll fix the logistics at some point. But uh, and if not, then go back Where to the, 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 the topic of the discussion right now, which is right. you and I were given so, this so fabricated down, existence. Maybe me. Never mind, brother. Disregard. And okay. you and I are trying to relate right, to this world anyway, as this definitely. character that you and I have been given. We've That's been given our values. Yeah. We've been given our culture. We've been given uh, oh, the, the, the family, the upbringing. We've been given all of this. But you and I, the question I have for you is, who do you want to be in this game? And you and I are right. trying to relate. You and I know that this game ends at some point. Now, we don't know when it ends. It ends when it ends. Uh, for all I know, the, this could be your last the, moment. For all I know, this could be my last moment. But you and I, will but all I, I know for certain is that right now I'm here. You want to be, in and right now you're here. You and I are right? trying to relate. You and I. So know in this limited experience of life that we now, call, we know you know, ends, our life, ends when it ends. Who do you for want to be in this game? Last moment. For all I know, how do you want the world to recognize for you? All I know for certain. If today you wanted to change your name, bro, go do it. And right now you're here. You and I are right Tell the world, hey, from now on forth, I want to be named King Arthur. Approach me as that. Right? I'm 18 years old, right? So by the laws of my land, at 18 years old, I am an adult. I get to choose who I want to be now. Okay, from now on, you call me King Arthur. I want to be named King Arthur. And from that point forward. Those who uh, comply, then that's the world that you live in. And those who don't, then, hey, disregard my land. But from the age of 18, now you get to declare who you want to be. Okay. From now on. Now, there's going to be a lot of circumstances in your life at 18 years old. A lot of questions that you're going to have. Like, well, shit, I don't know who I want to be. I don't know what the right thing to do is. Then, hey, disregard my land. But see, at, what I know about the existence at the core of every human being is that at the core, every human being wants to be right. You want to be right. I want to be right. And we're all trying to protect our rightness, our correctness. Nobody wants to be wrong. Matter of fact, I tell the next being that they're wrong. Now, if it's someone who values and respects your insight and your knowledge and your understandings of the world, then they'll understand. Like, there's people that I well, put I'm in a position above me to say, if I'm wrong, then, hey, I'll trust their judgment if I'm wrong. Matter of fact, I tell them But if they're in a position that they're not qualified to tell me if I'm right or wrong, then disregard them. And see, that's where you find yourself in a crossroads. You've granted other people the position of authority over your own character decisions, and that's a mistake. position that... Now, if you want to reclaim again, repossess, honor again your your own perception of who you are. Again, own yourself, because up until this video, other people have owned you. And I'm not saying I'm fully liberated of it. I'm still finding the chains of where I'm owned by, you know, the suppressors of this world. Honor again. What do I mean by that? What are you saying, Fernando? What are you What are you saying, bro? Maybe this is over your head. Because right. up until this video, other you're living your life for the happiness of others, right? First and foremost, starting with your parents, right? They probably want you to go get a college education. They probably want you to go get a good job. They probably want you to get married and meet that nice guy and that good girl, right? They have an expectation of you. So does your relatives. So do your cousins. So does your environment. They probably want right, the people who know you have an expectation of who you should be. But my question is this. Who made you qualified outside of your parents? Right, they're your parents. So there's a respect that comes with that. But that's another topic. So does your environment. Outside of your parents. The people who know you. Have an expectation. Who, who you in your mind, if you can think in this moment, well, my question is this: Have you allowed access? Who, qualified outside who of have who have you granted access so respect to, to have a authority position of your life of your and who parents, you should be and how you should conduct yourself? And if you take a, a close who, analysis in your mind, you're going to start to see that you've allowed other people. Have you allowed access? You've allowed their judgments who have, who to have dictate how you're going to be. That would mean, for example, 
I started to live for the approval of other people, strangers. And this happens a lot of, let's say, social media, right? A lot of people will post on social media so that they're approved, so that they're liked. So they'll start to do things that maybe internally compromises their values, but they'll do it because they're getting the, uh, the, the validation of others. They're getting the acknowledgement of others, right? And we live in a society where people are doing that a lot. They're compromising their values so that people like them more. Internally, now, compromises their values, but if that's the case for you, uh, the, the validation of others, if you're living for other people's right acknowledgement of you, if you're living for their expectations of you, if you're living for their their agreements of you, like them, are you living for you or are you living for them? And that's an honest question or an honest assessment that you got to look at. If are you living for other people or are you living for you? Because if I looked at it, which I have, there, or if you look at it, are you living for you or are you living for them? Is your happiness in life, let's say if our ultimate mission in life was just to be happy, right? Everybody wants to be happy. If at the end of the day, you just wanted to be happy. If I looked at it, which I have, there. Does happiness come from them on the outside or does happiness come from you on the inside? Your happiness in life. Because as I've, you know, assessed in my own life, the feeling of happiness isn't coming from out there. The feeling is coming from in here. Same thing as sadness. The feeling comes from in here. I have a sadness. I have a happiness. Because as I've, you know, I have an ambition. I have a sorrow. I have an upset. I have a problem. I have a solution. I have an agreement. I have a disagreement. See, the I takes ownership. The I is you. The I is me. The, the I is the being who associates to that feeling. Now, the outside, meaning, let's say, for example, someone is happy because they got a car. The car makes them happy. Takes ownership. The I is, is the car is me, the thing that makes the them happy? Let's say, for example, the car is still the car, but let's now say now it's not his side, car. Let's say it's his friend's car. Example, his friend just got a new car. Someone is happy because and a car. in turn, in his the eye experience, happy. he's not happy. He has a jealousy. Is the car right? The he's jealous that his friend got a car. In his the friend, his friend has happiness let's inside. The car is the car. His car. But in these two beings, there's two different experiences. There's two different I am experiences. One is I am happy. The other one is I am jealous or I am envious. He's jealous that his friend got a car in his friend. So what does that have to do with you and I? The car is the car. When you recognize that all day you're living from an I experience, all day you're happy, all day you're sad, all day you're mad, all day you have a problem, all day you're upset, all day you have this and that, recognize that that condition that you're in is your own internal problem. It's not the outside. You recognize that I have a problem with Sandy because she said this about me. No, Sandy can say whatever she wants to say. That's Sandy. She's saying that, but she's talking shit about you. Okay. What does that have to do with me? Condition that you're in. Well, she's saying that you're a liar. Why am I a liar? Not the outside. Oh, because she's saying that. It, you know, she's saying that you have a new car, but you don't have a new car. Sandy can say what I don't have a new car. Hey. That's Sandy. Is she making that she's up? That I don't know. She's talk saying talk that. About you. I never said that. Okay. What does that have to do? Oh, with so are you a liar or not? I don't know oh, what she's Sandy's saying. saying. That you're a liar. Whatever she's saying, I'm that's what liar. she's saying. But I didn't oh, say she's that. Saying that, you know, that's she's Sandy. Saying that you have a new car. I, I don't can only take control for me. So your happiness, your feelings, whatever your feelings associated with life are, they're ultimately up to you. If you're upset with something, it's for you to handle. If you're happy with something, it's for you to enjoy. But if you're relying on the outside forces to provide you that, that's a big error. If I'm relying on anything outside of me to make me happy, the moment it's taken away from me, I no longer am happy. If you're happy with something, it's for you to enjoy. That's a backwards but if you're philosophy. On the outside forces to provide you that, I'm only happy when she texts me. If I'm relying, I'm only happy when she's around. I'm only happy when she's nice to me. 
I know well, what happens when she's not around? What happens when she's not nice to me? What happens when she's uh, when she goes away? Am I no longer happy? I'm only happy Is happiness no longer available? I beg to differ. I'm only happy See, around. happiness wasn't I'm because she was around or because she was, nice she was nice to you. Well, happiness well, was because around. inside you felt happy. Nice now, she, she was just a uh, feeling that you felt away. internally I because, again, maybe you liked her, maybe no she felt good to you, whatever the case may be. But the happiness was inside of you. Happiness wasn't because she was around or because... Now, are there people who can make us feel happy? Of course. That's what good friends are. Now... Good friends, the minute you see a good friend, your heart opens up, your eyes light up, and you're like, oh, man, I can't wait to see this person. But recognize in that moment, that feeling is inside of you. You have access to that feeling all day, every day, just like you have access to feeling sad all day. Again, point your mind to something that makes you really sad. And I guarantee you're going to have a fucked up day all day. You see, the mind is split in two. You can focus on all the negative shit in your life, or you can focus on the things that you want, the things that make you feel greater and grander and bigger. It's a choice to decide how you want to feel today. It's a choice to decide how you're going to operate. Are things going to fuck me up and make me sad? Of course. You can focus. I'm not a robot. We have feelings and emotions. I'm not suppressing that. If I'm sad, I'm sad. But at the end of the day, to decide how you want as to I'm sharing it. with you right now, it's a choice. If I'm sad, it's because I'm choosing to, to just bask in my own sadness, right? If I think about my mom, my dad, my family, I'm like, man, I don't get to see them as much as I would like to. It makes me sad. When I'm around them, I get to enjoy them. But it also, there's a sadness behind it. Why? Because, oh, this is only temporary. One day they're no longer going to be here. I can think about all those things and it'll give me that feeling of sadness. But I can also think about, man, so good to be around them. It's so nice to have such loving, kind, caring beings who've taken care of me for such a long time. Why? Because, what a gift. Oh, this is only temporary. What a privilege it is to know these people. I can think about and then my feeling would and raise, and rise. Sadness, but so recognize man, every day you're, again, so having nice an eye experience. Such loving, kind, Let's say, for example, there's two people. One has money, the other one doesn't. The one with money has a lot of money, but he's not happy. And, then my feeling would, and let's say the person with no money, let's say a monk, lives on bare minimum. Every day has no money, but he's extremely happy. The man with the money is going to be like, oh, I want to be like the monk because the monk is happy. He doesn't have money and responsibilities and burdens and, and debts and payments and all that shit. The monk just has freedom and, uh, you know, spiritual liberation. I want what he has. Then the monk looks at him and says, whoa, but that man has money. He has experiences. Responsibilities. He has a freedom that I don't have. He can travel the world, get on planes, meet other people. But I don't think the monk is comparing himself to the man. I think the monk is fully basking in his spiritual process. Now, whether you're the man with a bunch of money or the monk, there's not a point. The point is, is that your condition in life is a choice. You can be the person with but a lot of money and be unfulfilled, or you can be the person with a lot of money and be extremely fulfilled. You could be the person in many relationships and be fulfilled, or you could be the person with no relationships and fulfilled as well too. Condition in life is at the end of the day, it's a choice. And there's advantages for every choice, and there's disadvantages for every choice too. You could be the person right? in many relationships. Like they say, the more money, the more the problems. The less money, the less problems. Why well, you can also say the opposite. The less money and the more problems, the more money, the less problems. And it's all subjective. At the end of the day, you're relating to every subject in life based on your association to it, how you feel about it. So take a look inside. How do you feel about certain subjects of life? The less about your relationships, your health, your own appearance, your your environment, your condition, your friendships, your relationships. How do you feel about your career? How do you feel about your job? How do you feel about your own pet? How do you feel about you? Have you asked yourself about certain How do you feel about you today? Not in the past. Not that you used to be insecure. 
and that you're working on it. Not one day you're you're bullied. And today, how do you feel about you right now? How do you feel about your job? As you're watching this, how do you feel about you? Have you asked yourself? And if there's any feeling inside of you that takes you away from your highest potential, your highest form of being. Today, how do you feel about you right now? Can you recognize that that's a choice that you're sitting in right now? Well, you're like, well, Fernando, I got these bills, rent is due, you know, my baby's crying, you know, I lost my job. How could I be happy? I just got in a breakup. How could I be happy right now? Hey, man, your highest form of at the end of the day, that's up to you to decide. You get to decide how you go through that. You must decide how you feel about these subjects. Because again, there's advantages to every condition. Let's just say you're no longer have the responsibility of that job. Let's just say, okay, you lost your job, right? Yeah, and I'm upset about it. You Okay, you can be upset. Or let's say is the possibility of well, There's let me go find a better job. To every condition. Let's just I still don't have a job, no but instead of me feeling bad about not having a job, let's just say, let's just say okay, wow, job, right? I yeah, now yeah, have the freedom to okay. go okay. explore what else is available well, to me say, at another job. Maybe an opportunity, a business job. opportunity comes up. I still you see, don't have a job, but the universe is going to happen regardless of how you and I feel about it. Tomorrow is going to come and tomorrow is going to go regardless of how you and I feel about it. It doesn't matter at another job. How you feel doesn't matter. Opportunity comes up. How you feel only tells you how much you enjoy today. Now, if you feel bad about today, then that's your experience of life. You felt bad today. If you felt great today, then congratulations. You felt great today. How you feel doesn't matter. There's highs of life and there's lows of lows. And both of them teach us a lesson. I'm not here telling you all day be positive and, oh, you just got to be positive in life. You just got to be willy-nilly. You just got to be, you know, when bad things happen, just remind yourself, hey, I'm still happy. I'm not saying that shit. The next cheesy ass motherfucking coach that tells you like, oh, you just got to be positive. No, motherfucker. I recognize that life that we live in right now, we live in a suppressive, a prison planet. And here you and I are just doing the best that we fucking can to live in this life. I'm still happy. I know that today I'm just doing the best that I can to live a good experience of life. And I'm almost damn certain you are too. With what you know and what you have as resources to you, I guarantee you're just doing the best that you can, right? Exactly. Now, if you can do more, then great, bro. Go fucking do more. There's always more we can do. Now, if you're fulfilled, fully filled with what you're doing, then congratulations, dude. Congratulations. Genuinely. You're doing more than planet Earth. You more. <clears throat> now, this, again, is called the new breed. Why? Because this is a new breed of being, a new breed of individuals who, again, take responsibility for their fucking life. Congratulations. Recognizing that the world gave you a certain condition, well, what an opportunity for you to now tell the world, hey, if you cursed me in this life and you took from me my own goodness, you took from me my own innocence, you took from me my own happiness, motherfucker, I got something for you. Now let me show you who I am. You've given me your cards, right? You told me how I should be. You told me how I should live. You told me where I was going to grow up. You told me what my name was going to be. You told me that that was my family. You told me I should trust them. Okay, motherfucker, I did. Now it's my turn to say this is my life and I get to decide who I am in this game. You told me not how you. I should be. You told me how I should you show. are not you an authority to, to me you told because me I didn't give family. you that position. You told me that that was my family. You told me I didn't you give you the position to be an authority of how now I want to be in my motherfucking life. I want to be this guy. I want to say what I want to say. I want to express how I choose to express. You get to, again, be a friend of me or you can go. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change how I feel about me. Same thing is true for you. Who do you want to be? I want to say what I Who do you want to have around you? Who amplifies that fire in your soul? 
friend of me, or you can go. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change. Because it's at the end of the day, it's your, day, it's your choice. Same thing no one can tell you how to be. Who do you want to be? No one can tell you what to do. You, you got to decide that shit. Who amplifies? You want to be at an elite class of the world, a superhero on planet Earth, which is my aim. I don't want to be an average motherfucker. Fuck no, I despise average. I want to be the cream of the crop, the one percent, the elite of the elite, not the pedophile elite that we see on social media. If right now whoever's watching this, which is look up Sam Smith Grammy Awards, look at his music video, look at the the transgender who's on that music video too, and you tell me, is there not an agenda right now on planet Earth that? We see on social just watch media. the music video, right now, listen yeah, to these beings it. talk, look up, look Sam at Smith their promotion, look at, look at what they're pushing. Look at the, the next the, young child, the next young boy, and the next young girl. You they see these people as quote unquote celebrities, and they have this and they have status and power. They love their music. There's kids listening to songs called Unholy. Watch the music performance on the Grammys. There's a young being right now looking at these individuals thinking that that's who you need to be in life to be successful. I'm here to fucking tell you it's not. That is a bullshit facade that Hollywood told you. And in Hollywood, there's not one thing. It's a world of compromises. It's a world of rituals. It's a world of destruction. Not one celebrity, not one celebrity, not one fucking celebrity right now on planet earth is living a good life well fernando they have cars and yachts and money i understand that but that doesn't mean infinitely they're good about them see this whole lecture i've talked about the i experience see the i experience of a being who has to compromise who has to do things that they know are against humanity if they have to do things that are against their own values that being cannot feel good inside no matter what they have just like the criminal who committed a crime but escapes and goes to another world, he has to, for the rest of his life, internally, have, look over his shoulder because he committed a crime. The crime is inside of him. He committed the crime. He may have gone away from the damages of going to prison or going, getting arrested, of getting murdered, whatever the case may be. But internally, that being has a suppression inside. The crime is inside of him. Now, in the world of 2023, you tell me right now, go look at the average celebrity, the average athlete, the average whoever, whoever's out right now. You tell me, just look at that being. Is that being doing okay? As a being, don't look at their status. Don't look at their fame. Look at them as a being, just like you and I. And measure them, look in their eyes and say, is that being doing okay? If you have all the money in the world, why are you fat? Just look at that being. Is that being doing okay? Lizzo? As a being. Why are you guys getting fat? Don't look at you guys have all the money in the world and you're fat. And why why do you look like shit? Why are you walking in public looking like shit? You have all the money. Don't you have status and reputation? Lizzo. Why are you guys getting? Why do you sound like that? You, guys have all the money you sound all guilty money. about something. Why do you sound like that? What did you do? Why is Cardi B saying her own kids don't listen to her music? But my kids should? Why do you sound like that? You sound guilty about something. Why do you sound like that? Why are teachers in the education system? Her own kids don't listen to Ooh. music. Let's say don't have kids, kids. Tell me my kids how to be. Why do you I'll end it with this. So guilty about something. I remember one time in elementary school. Why do you sound like that? One Why of my teachers, teachers at that time, I think it was fifth or sixth grade. Ooh. She told this girl, because that girl didn't do they her homework and she was having trouble in her life. Kids. She was, you could tell she she had a troubled life, a brain. Fifth or sixth grade, that we're probably like, I, I don't know, nine, ten, elementary school, eleven, maybe. One of my teachers, teachers, and, 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 and sixth grade. I remember once 
They started to do her homework again. It was like the third day. And the teacher got really upset. Like, you could tell. Really upset. And to me, just thinking about it now, it's so fucking weird to think that a teacher would get upset over that. It's actually absurd. Now, if I'm a teacher, I'm approaching the kid on the side, not in front of the whole class, and just sitting down with her maybe after class, like, hey, uh, Sandy, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, of course. Really after class, yeah. And to sit down, like, hey, Sandy, how's everything going? Weird to think that a teacher. What's what's troubling you right now? It's actually absurd. I recognize this is the third day that you don't finish your assignments for for school. Is everything okay at home? And just sitting down with her. And then the little being, you're going to see their shine. It's like, then you'll know there's a problem at home. You don't know what that little kid is going through. Maybe their family is abusing drugs. Maybe their family is, as she sees her parents fighting, her mom getting abused. You don't know what the condition of the child is. Now, before you push your agenda on that child, find out what's going on with the child. Your job is much bigger than assigning a fucking homework assignment, you idiot. Drugs. Maybe their families, as she sees her parents fighting. But what did this teacher do? I'm getting abused. I remember. She yells at the, the girl. And she tells her, one day you're going to end up pregnant at 16 years old. You're going to drop out of school. And you're never going to complete. Your job is. And I was just like, damn, that is fucked up. That is fucked up telling the young being at fifth grade she's gonna be 16 and pregnant. She yells at the she's gonna be a dropout, she's not gonna be successful in life. And you're telling this to a young being, you irresponsible. Who gave you this position? Who gave you this position of an authority as a teacher? Now, secondly, if you're a parent watching this, why are you knowing exactly the shit that you went through in school? Why are you putting your children in schools? School is fucked up for you too, right? If you're a parent, right? Either you were bullied, you were made fun of. As a teacher, you recognize that. The, the homework the never helped you in life. The things that you learned in school never helped you. you so why the fuck exactly are you putting your kids in that? that you went through in school. Is my question. Why are you putting your children in the same schools that fucked you up. Why are you putting your children in that? Oh, because you need to go work and you need to go make money and you need and you're seeing it as a child care. Oh, I see. Recognize that. So don't you think it's your responsibility before you have a fucking child to make sure you're not in the position where if you were to have a child, that child could learn from you. That child could be around you. See, if I were to ever have a child, I would want my child to learn from me. Who the fuck do they got to go learn from a fucking teacher for? If I had a son, he's not learning from another fucking man. About what? What does that man have to share my son about life? About mathematics? Son, I'll teach you basic math because that's all you ever need. You don't need to learn the quadratic formula and the uh, Pythagorean theorem and fuck that shit. Why? Because I never used it. And look at me, son. I'm strong. I'm an honorable man. I have friends. I have a worldwide movement called IMC Nation. I'm well-liked. I'm well-respected. Son, if you want to be a powerful man, uh, it's not that that makes you a man. It's your values and your character that make you a man. And look at me, son. Hey, daughter. An honorable I don't man. want you to learn from this teacher. Why? Because look at the type of woman she is. That's an unfulfilled, unhappy, not soft, not caring, not nurturing woman. I don't want you to be like her. You're a princess. I want you to be safe. I want you to have everything you could ever want. I don't want you to learn from But I want to show you the values so that you could have that. So that you're an innocent, clean girl. Not soft, so they're not you're not used by the world. The world's gonna try and use you. You're a princess. Like they've used all women. You should be safe. You should have everything you could ever want. All right, guys. So we wrap it up here with the new breed. Every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can catch me going live for the new breed here on Zoom on YouTube. You can catch it on all platforms that will be streaming: Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere that you can find a podcast station right, guys, to be able to find every channel from all the top ranking Everybody IMC members. This is the new breed. This is another episode brought to you by your host, Fernando Caro and LSC 